Welcome to the My20 Tower Training. I will cover all the basic training for admin, coordinator, and manager roles. Admin roles can view and edit within the tower. Coordinator and managers can only view the tower. The first section we will cover is the driver overview screen. This is the driver overview screen. You will see the map at the top and all the active drivers below the map. On the map, you will see headsets in various colors as well as the distance traveled to the right so far today and the cycle remaining. The headsets that you see on the map are different colors. Orange is for driving. White will be on duty. Gray would be sleeper berth and black would be off duty. These colors coordinate with the status below on the drivers listed. The most recent status will be at the top of the list. If you see a circle with a number on it on the map, this is a grouping of drivers in a specific area too close to spread them out. To the right of the map are icons. To the top right is the driver status summary. This shows what status or exception each of the drivers are in. The plus and the minus allow you to zoom in or zoom out of the map. The square down below is the full screen icon. It allows the screen to go full screen, or if you tap it again, it allows it to go back to the, the normal size to minimize it. The arrow or the reset icon here just resets the map to standard view. Lastly, the choose view icon allows you to choose the map view, whether you would like satellite or terrain. It also lets you view traffic conditions or show traffic incidents in the area. So as you zoom in, you can get a better look of the area in which you are trying to see. So as we zoom in closer, we get a better look at some of the icons. Um, construction, road closures, etc. The next thing we will show is the driver detail screen, starting with the timeline tab. Under the timeline, you can see the duty status listings for the entire day, the date box up at the top right that allows you to choose a particular day to view. You can also edit the statuses or reassign statuses by clicking the status, adjusting the time accordingly, changing the status, or writing a note and saving changes. To reassign, you would click reassign, select the driver that the record belonged to, and then reassigning. The map to the right shows the driver's route. The breadcrumb below allows you to follow the route, showing orange as driving, black is off duty, white is on duty, seeing the different locations, speeds, areas, etc. Then you can view the rods graph. This is the graph that the driver can see on their My20 app. Exceptions are also available to view what exceptions have been activated, when they were activated, and when they were deactivated. Down below that you can see four circles the black circle indicates the time remaining before the break has to be taken. The orange circle is how much driving time is remaining. The white circle is how much duty time is remaining. And the gray circle shows the amount of cycle time remaining. You can click the show recap button, which will show you the last eight days and the hours, the recap hours that were done by the driver. The last thing to view is the last updated and this is the last, it shows you the last time the tower was updated. This is the live view tab. The live view tab only shows if the driver is connected to the ELD 
and has the My20 app open in the foreground of their phone or tablet. The live view is updated every second. The daily log tab will show the current day as the default. On the daily log, you will see the status listings, trip information, as well as the miles driven for the day. You can choose a different day other than the current day by going to the date box at the top left. You can also choose a 30 day range by clicking the toggle switch next to date range. If you would like to export 30 days of logs, you would choose the 30 days by choosing the start date and the end date and search. The, uh, the logs will upload to one screen. Click the three dots at the top right hand corner to export the PDF once the logs are generated. FMCSA Upload tab. This tab allows you to upload a driver's record of duty status or RODS records for seven plus one days, same as the application, but also a greater range of up to six months for an audit. You would choose the start and end date, put in a comment, press the upload tab, then comment again, and upload. The officer will then have access to the rods from web services. As you can see, FMCSA upload was successful. From the main menu to the left of the screen, you can view the truck overview. The truck overview screen shows the trucks on the map, just like the drivers from the driver overview screen. Below the map, the drivers of the trucks are listed. You can select a truck to see the truck timeline or the truck information. The truck timeline will allow you to view the truck route and also see the breadcrumb trail below the map by pushing the play button. The truck information screen will just allow you to see all the information that is listed about the truck. To access the cameras from the main menu, go to the Cameras tab on the left-hand corner. The screen will pull up and you, it will show how many cameras you have active or activated on the dashboard. Active cameras in the moment under Online, Standby cameras, and how many are offline. Standby means the truck is stopped and turned off and the camera records for a period of time after the truck turns off. The default is 10 minutes, or you can change the default time to whatever you prefer. Offline means the camera is not getting power or has not gotten power, or the default time of 10 minutes is up. To the right of, this, of the map, you will see snapshots and list. Snapshots are the last snapshots of the last driver facing camera or the last road facing camera. The list shows the cameras in a list with their status and truck number. You can also scroll over to the right to see their last location. If you select at the camera icon back on the snapshots, it will open up a new tab on your desktop. If you do not want a new tab to open, you can go to the list, pick the camera you would like to see, since that one is green, we can open it and it's active. It will show a timeline. Next, select the camera info where you will see the IMEI number, the truck number, and see the status that the camera is in. Click on live view to see live real time camera views in driver, driver or road facing. The video request will allow you to select a time of video that you would like to download. You would pull the icon over, so you would slide the arrow icon over 
or tap over to the time you would like the video to start. Once you click over to the time you would like the video to start, then it will load for that selected time frame. Then you would hit play. After it plays, it will download or allow you to download the video at the bottom. It will download 30 seconds. You can change that duration here. You can also change from standard to high definition if you need to share with someone like an insurance company, law enforcement, so forth and so on. You can also change the date from the date box if you need. Once you tap the video request and it downloads, there is a download error, error here at the bottom of the screen. And so again, you can change the duration from 30 seconds to any time frame you would like. You can change the date, you can change the quality. High definition does use more time, uh, more data. So be very careful with using high definition. Also, if you're looking at the, at the video in live view, it also uses more data. So you do have a limited amount of data that you can use. If you have any questions about settings or preferences, please reach out to Connexial Support and we'll be happy to review those with you. You can also do truck specific settings if need be. If there's a driver who has a little, needs a little more attention about a specific thing, we can do driver specific or truck specific settings. Uh, lastly, if you have a driver that is in an accident, please notify My20 immediately for assistance to save the video. Uh, videos are, are overwritten on the standard side at size SD cards after approximately 70 standard hours of recording. From the main menu option to the left of the screen, you can choose the chat feature. Chat allows one-on-one -on -one chat functionality within the app. You can send a text or a voice message as well as a document inside the app. From the main menu screen, you can choose the Reports tab. We will talk about violations. The Violations tab provides a list of time clock violations. Violations for the carrier are listed with the most recent on the top. The violation shows the date and time and type of violation that occurred. If you click the violation, it will take you to the rods graph so that you can view that particular day. The next report we will talk about are DVIR defects. The DVIR defects screen shows pre-trip DVIR and post-trip DVIR reports and any defects that were reported if the report is completed. If a particular report is completed, it will show, like this one on top, the number of defects that were found, the number, the truck number, and the report being completed. If the report is not completed, it will show as the second one. You can click the down arrow and it will show the details. The next section of the reports we will look at are the unidentified ELD logs. Unidentified ELD logs are records that are stored in the ELD while the app is not connected to the ELD. Once the driver is connected and in a non-driving status, the app will present them with any UDRs or unidentified records. The driver has the option to send records to carrier or accept to the driver. UDRs will become visible in the tower when the driver sends the records to the carrier. The admin can choose to annotate the record by clicking the box or multiple boxes to the left of the record and then clicking annotation and writing a note. The admin can also reassign the records to another driver by clicking the box or multiple boxes and then choosing to assign, choosing the driver that the record belongs to. Once this has be, been reassigned, 
the record will go from the status of waiting for assignment to waiting for driver approval. Keeping the UDRs caught up and or assigned is very critical because they will, these will be reported at roadside with any upload of logs or within any audit upload. The fuel tab is where you can view your IFTA fleet report and enter fuel receipts. The IFTA fleet report shows the miles per state and the percentage of miles in a particular state. These miles are populated from the ELD being connected to the application. The fuel used, fuel bought, and fuel variants are filled in after fuel receipts are entered. The fuel receipt tab allows you to enter fuel receipts manually by clicking the create button at the top left. The other way to upload fuel receipts is through a spreadsheet. Click the three dots at the top right hand corner, import a CSV, click download sample to create the spreadsheet exactly like the sample, then import into the tower. Once the fuel receipts are for the quarter are uploaded, if the fuel fleet report will be complete and ready to submit to your state. Showing all of the IFTA fuel receipts and miles in the state for the quarter on the IFTA fuel report. The Configure tab allows you to view carrier information as well as active users. Under Carrier Information, you can view the carrier details, the users, the trucks, and any subscription details, such as valid subscriptions, the amount of subscriptions, and much more. The Notifications tab allows you to send a notification to one particular driver or all users in the carrier through a push notification to the application. That concludes our My20 Tower admin training. For more training resources, please visit connectseal.com support. You can also reach our support team by email support at connectseal.com or by phone at 865-888 6920. We appreciate your business. Drive safe. Thank you.